Welcome to Poughkeepsie, New York. Oh. We, we are deeply honored, but more than the honor, I think we should give another round of applause for the president to come out here to Poughkeepsie. It's an, it's an exciting day for the thousands of IBMers who work here at the site, but also for the 240,000 IBMers worldwide, many of whom I know are joining us online or are going to watch this online. IBM's Poughkeepsie site is of deep symbolic value for IBM and the United States, for good reason. For decades, the innovations we have done here in Poughkeepsie have helped kept the United States at the forefront of technological leadership, created countless jobs, and strengthened our economy. It's telling, 74 years ago, Dwight Eisenhower opened one of the buildings on this site, and he called it dedicating this building to the future of America. I think that's what we're seeing here. This very site has produced data processing systems that have made the U.S. social security system possible, the Apollo program that helped put a man on the moon, and the power U.S. businesses in every industry, literally every industry. <laughs> Earlier this year, Poughkeepsie announced the latest generation of mainframes, which still underpin the global economy. By the way, Poughkeepsie is the place where we manufacture the state-of-the-art computers, and we export these made-in-America computers all over the world. And Poughkeepsie is innovating not just for today, but also for tomorrow. Poughkeepsie is home to IBM's quantum computer data center, which has the largest concentration of actual quantum computers anywhere. So, so, <laughs> these, these quantum computers mark the beginning of a new era of computing. And by the way, and of jobs, from accelerating the development of new materials, new batteries, new pharmaceutical drugs, quantum computers hold the promise of solving a category of problem that are impossible to solve on other computers. Poughkeepsie is also the heart of a broader ecosystem. We have other sites in Yorktown Heights and Albany. They are helping to push the boundaries of semiconductor design and manufacturing. In all of this, we benefit from public-private partnerships including with the governor and the state of New York. And Governor Hochul is with us here today. So please, give her a round of applause. All these innovations, which are critical to the future of U.S. business, industry, and society, will also greatly benefit from the Chips and Science Act. IBM commends and thanks President Biden, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the members of Congress who are with us here today, and leaders across Washington who work tirelessly to make this unique investment in America's semiconductor industry. Please give them a round of applause. This law will play a critical role in ensuring a reliable and secure supply of chips. It will also help advance the business of quantum computing. With the Chips and Science Act, the federal government has made an important investment in America's future, and IBM is going to step forward too. We are proud to announce that IBM is pledging to invest $20 billion across the region over this next decade in research and development that will keep the Hudson Valley at the forefront of global technology leadership.
This investment includes breakthroughs in semiconductor technology, mainframe computers, quantum computers, and artificial intelligence. All of this will boost economic activity and create jobs. In addition to supporting the 7,500 jobs in the Hudson Valley and 11,000 jobs across the state. From basic science to pushing the limits of semiconductor technology and harnessing the power of quantum, the future of computing is happening right here in New York's Hudson Valley. We are proud to call this region and New York State our home and to make this investment. So Mr. President, distinguished guests, thank you for being here today. And I'd like to end by calling out a thank you to the thousands of workers who stayed here and really make the computers that power the global economy. So if you would all give a round of applause to all of the people who work at the site. Please welcome Quality Engineering Manager here at IBM Poughkeepsie, Abby Wise. Thank you very much, Arvind. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abby Wise. It's an honor to be here today, representing all of my colleagues at IBM Poughkeepsie, and to welcome and introduce President Biden. I've worked in Poughkeepsie for just over three years. And today, I support this manufacturing team as the quality engineering manager. My job is to make sure that the cutting edge IBM Z systems that leave this plant are ready to meet the tremendous expectations of our customers. I got my degree in electrical engineering, and after graduating from the Ohio State University, <laughs> I knew I wanted two things, a change of scenery and a job in tech that didn't require me to code. Here in Poughkeepsie, I found both. From my first conversation, with this team, I was struck by the pride IBMers have in this company, its products, and its role in innovation. Here in Poughkeepsie, you see people with decades of experience mentoring people like me, the next generation of American tech leaders. President Biden's visit today is a proud and exciting moment for IBMers all around the world. And for all of us here in Poughkeepsie who are creating the future of computing. As Arvin said, all the innovations that we deliver here in Poughkeepsie and across the Hudson Valley are critical to America's future. The Chips and Science Act will drive new technologies that feed into products IBM and our clients depend on. And it will help ensure America remains a global leader in technology. Thank you to President Biden and to the members of Congress here with us today for making that historic law happen. I am deeply honored and very proud to introduce a president who understands how critical innovation is to our country and to communities like ours here in Poughkeepsie. Now, Everyone, please join me in welcoming President Joe Biden. Well, Abby, thank you very much. That was very nice of you. From the Ohio State. And we have a running battle in my office because we have some that went to that other Ohio University. And it's constant. But I, look, folks, uh, 
Arvid, uh, thank you very much uh, for hosting us today. It's uh, really important to us. And Governor, thank you for the passport into the state. I appreciate very much. You're a, a great partner to me and a great leader of the state in creating jobs and uh, making New York, once again, the hub of manufacturing in the world. They couldn't be here today, but you have two special thanks to your New York's two great senators, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who never tells you what's on his mind. You never have to wonder. He's done a hell of a job. And Senator Gillibrand, she, uh, she's done a great job as well. And it's great to be here with the Hudson Valley Congressman, Sean Patrick Maloney. <laughs> Sean, I'm Catherine Eugenia Finnegan's son. I just want you to know that, okay? And also, Paul Tanko, uh, another Irishman. Uh, I'm only kidding, obviously, but uh, I just want you to know that, uh, at any rate, the newest member, Pat Ryan, who's proved the pundits wrong and got elected in August. <laughs> Pat, it's great to be with you, pal. It's a hell of a delegation. It's one of the most confident in the country. And it's great to be here at IBM here in Poughkeepsie. You know, an iconic American company founded more than 100 years ago, and uh, that has more patents than any other U.S. company, than any other. And I feel it's going to keep going. And the source of American jobs, American innovation, American pride. And it's here, it's here at this factory and the factories of other companies across America where America's future is literally being built. Because of the groundbreaking Chips and Science Act that I signed into law with the help of the Majority Leader Schumer and members of the Congress are here today. Chuck stayed the course, stuck with me, and we got it done. And folks, by the way, just since we've been elected, we've created 678,000 new manufacturing jobs. Where, and we're just getting started. Where is it written that we can't lead manufacturing in the world? I don't know where that's written. And that's one of the things the CHIPS Act is going to change. The law that's going to build a future and a proud, proud legacy, not only for IBM, but for the country. A legacy of innovation and manufacturing that exists in this region of New York. It was here in Poughkeepsie where the rifles for World War I were made. Where the first electric typewriters, calculators, even cough drops were made. I brought some with me. <laughs> and it's here now where the Hudson Valley could become the epicenter of the future of quantum computing, the most advanced and fastest computing ever, ever seen in the world. Quantum computing has the potential to transform everything from how we create new medicines to how we power artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. It's technology that is vital to our economy and equally important to our national security our national security. And it's technology that's made possible because of semiconductors, those tiny little computer chips everyone in this room knows better than any, any other room in the country, the size of a fingertip that power our everyday lives, everything in our lives, smartphones, cars, washing machines, hospital equipment, the Internet, the electric grid, and so much more. But here's the deal. America invented these chips. America invented these chips. They powered NASA's first moon mission that President Kennedy inspired here in America. Federal investment helped bring down the cost of making these chips, creating a market and an entire new industry. As a result, over 30 years ago, America had more than 30 percent of the global chip production. But then something happened. Something happened. American manufacturing, the backbone of our economy, got hollowed out because companies began to move jobs and production overseas. And as a result, today we're down to barely 10 percent of the world's chips, despite leading in chip research and design. And as we saw during the pandemic, when factories, when factories that make these ships shut, chips shut down around the world, the global economy literally comes to a screeching halt. More Americans have learned the phrase supply chain and what it means. Well, guess what? The supply chain is going to start here and end here in the United States. I'm not joking. For example, 
Here in the United States, one third of the core inflation last year, the core inflation last year was due to higher prices of automobiles. Why? Because of the shortage of semiconductors that make these vehicles move. Folks, we need to make these chips here in America to bring down everyday cost and create good paying American jobs. And don't take my word for it. Listen to the leaders of IBM and across the country. They're making decisions right now about where to invest to produce these chips. And they're choosing America because they see we're coming back. We're leading the way. As I said, since I came to office, our economy has created 10 million jobs, 668 manufacturing jobs. Proof that made in America is no longer a slogan. It's a reality. And the Chips and Science Act makes historic investment in companies to build advanced manufacturing facilities here in America. Since I signed into the law last summer, we've seen incredible progress. Just here in the Hudson Valley, IBM is investing $20 billion over the next 10 to design and manufacture semiconductor, mainframe technology, and quantum computers. In Syracuse, the company Micron announced it's going to invest $100 billion over the next 20 years to build factories to make special memory chips. You have to explain to you all what a memory chip is. Those chips that store information on your smartphone, among other things. It's going to create 50,000 jobs and create create an increase in America's share of the memory chips, increase it by 500 percent. That would be the largest American investment of its kind ever, 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 ever. And folks, last month I was outside Columbus, Ohio, where Intel is investing $20 billion to build a semiconductor factory on 100 acres of land that I dubbed as the field of dreams. It's going to create 10,000 good paying jobs. Union jobs, I might add. And a significant number of those jobs, you do not need an advanced degree. You do not need an advanced degree. So you're going to have people who are usually wearing blue collars who are going to be making an average $120,000 a year. And it's about time. I want to remind everybody, I know I get criticized for being the most pro-labor president in history. There's a simple reason for that. They're the single, no, they're the, you're the single best trained, most competent workers in the world. That's the reason why. And by the way, the middle class built this country, but unions built the middle class. That's a fact. Look, Global Foundries and, Qual and, and Qualcomm, they've announced a $4 billion project to produce chips in America that would otherwise have been made overseas. Qualcomm, Qualcomm is one of the largest chip designers and planning to boost production up to 50% in the next five years. North, in North Carolina, Wolfspeed is investing $5 billion to make chips and devices for electric vehicles. That will create 1,800 jobs by 2030 in the United States. And folks, Folks, the future of chips industry is going to be made in America. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. It's going to be made in America. And making these chips in America is going to create new businesses for countless small manufacturers and suppliers into the supply chain that's going to thrive, all because of this law. And many of these good-paying jobs don't require, as I said, a college degree. It matters. All of this is in our economic interest, and it's in our national security interest as well. Earlier this year, I went down to Lockheed's factory in Alabama, where they're making the Javelin missiles that we're supplying to Ukraine to defend itself against Putin's unprovoked war. <laughs> Folks, and I've been able to cut off significant pieces of manufacturing needs that they have to make their weapons they're not getting from the United States. But that's a different story. We need semiconductors not only to make these Javelin missiles, but also the weapon systems of the future that are going to rely even more on advanced chips. Unfortunately, we produce 0% of these advanced chips today. 0% of these chips that we need today. China is trying to move ahead of us in manufacturing them. It's no wonder, literally, the Chinese Communist Party 
actively lobbied against the Chips and Science Act that I've been pushing in the United States Congress. The Communist Party of China was lobbying in the United States Congress against passage of this legislation. And unfortunately, some of our friends in the other team bought it. The United States has to lead the world in producing these advanced chips. This law is going to make sure that it will. And to be clear, the Chips and Science Act is not handing out blank checks to companies. I've directed my administration, and I want you to listen to this, to be laser focused on the guardrails that's going to protect taxpayers' dollars. We'll make sure the companies partner with unions, community colleges, technical schools, and offer training and apprenticeships. We're going to make sure the work small and minority-owned businesses get to participate. We're going to make sure the companies that take these taxpayers' dollars do not turn around and make investments in China, investments that undermine our supply chains and national security. That's a guarantee. Because in this law, I have the power to take back any federal funding from these companies. They don't meet these requirements. That's in the law. The law requires the companies build these semiconductor facilities, pay Davis-Bacon prevailing wages, and they do it here. And it's going to ensure the tens of thousands of new construction jobs created in high-paying jobs and more often high-paying union jobs. We're talking about building facilities at a time 10 times the size of a football field. And this is that's the construction side, the construction side. We're going to require companies to use these investments for workers in research and development, not to buy back stock or issue dividends. Let me say that again. You've got to invest the money. You can't use it to buy back your stock. Look, and finally, this law is about more than chips. It's about science as well. Decades ago, the United States used to invest 2%, 2% of our GDP in research and development. That led us to create everything from the Internet to GPS. We, the United States, invested in research and development. Today, we invest less than 1 percent, about 7 tenths of 1 percent. We used to rank number one in the world in research and development. Today, we rank number nine. China ranks was eight a decade ago. China now is number two. And other countries are closing in fast. So the Chips and Science Act sets us on a path to move up again. It boosts our research and development funding back up closer to 1 percent of our GDP, the fastest single year in 70 years. And it's going to make sure we lead the world in industries of the future, from quantum computing to artificial intelligence, advanced biotechnology. Think of the things and the kind of investments we're going to deliver. Vaccines for cancers, cures for HIV, Inventing the next big thing that hadn't even been imagined yet. And here's something else that really is important. We're going to make sure that any company that uses federal research and development funding to invest in new technology has to make the product in America. In America. I mean it. That means we'll invent it in America and make it in America. And we're going to make sure we include all of America. We're going to support entrepreneurs and technology hubs all across the country, including at historic black colleges and universities, minority-serving minority institutions, tribal colleges. We're going to tap into the great competitive advantage of our diverse and talented workforce, urban, rural, and suburban. And folks, I've asked many other business leaders this question because this is the other team who opposed me on this, said this was the problem. When the United States decides to invest considerable resources in the new industry that we need to build up, does it encourage businesses to get in the game or discourage them? The answer is overwhelmingly, it encourages businesses to get in the game, including IBM. Federal investments attract private sector investments creates jobs, it creates industries, and it demonstrates we're all in this together. During a trip to South Korea not long ago, I met with the chairman of the SK Group, the second largest conglomerate in South Korea that makes everything from semiconductors to 
large capacity batteries, electric vehicle chargers, pharmaceuticals. They've committed more than $50 billion in investments here in America and are going to grow its U.S. workforce from 4,000 to 20,000 in just three years. I believe the reason why companies like IBM are choosing to build in America is because we're better positioned globally than we have been in any time in a long time. We have, this is not hyperbole. We have the best and most productive workers in the world. We have the best research universities in the world, a dynamic venture capitalist system, a rule of law that protects intellectual property. In addition, we wrote and passed the bipartisan infrastructure law that I signed with the help of members of the Congress who are here today and lead their leadership. And we finally decided we're going to move up from being ranked number 13 in the world in infrastructure to number one. Because guess what? When you have the best infrastructure in the world, companies invest where the infrastructure is and get product to market faster and cheaper and more reliably. Ask any business leader. <laughs> Ask any business leader, what is one of the most important factors they consider when deciding where to invest? I promise you, they'll tell you it's whether they have a means to transport product around the country and the world. It's whether they have employees have a safe and thriving place to live. The bipartisan infrastructure law means better roads and bridges, ports and airports, clean water, high-speed Internet for every American. That's going to create millions of jobs all by itself and make us more competitive worldwide. It's a game changer. One trillion, three hundred, two hundred billion dollars for infrastructure. Let me close with this. You know, I've had a great partner here with me and a great leader of this state who uh, is creating jobs and making New York the hub of advanced manufacturing. And it really does matter. It really does matter. Because that's one of the reasons I think you have attracted some of the investment here from other major computer chip businesses that are going in the world, uh, in the United States. It matters. It matters. This is about economic security, folks. It's about national security. It's about good paying jobs you can raise a family on. Jobs now, jobs for the future, jobs in every part of our country. And that's what we're going to see here in this factory in the beautiful Hudson Valley. People of all ages, all races, all backgrounds, with advanced degrees to no degrees, working side by side, doing the most sophisticated manufacturing the world has ever seen. And they're showing what I've always believed. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've been saying this since I decided to run. There's nothing, nothing, nothing the United States is unable to do if we set our mind to it. Nothing, nothing. And if we do it together. I really mean it. You see, you know, when I were walking down to get to the first event, we talked about it. More is going to change for the better in the next 10 years than happened in the last 40 years. We're at an inflection point in world history where the changes are going to take place in the next 10 are going to fundamentally alter the way in which we look at the world and our place in the world. And that's not hyperbole. It's real. And we are better positioned than any nation in the world to own the second quarter of the 21st century. I really mean that. And it's because of companies like yours. It's because of innovation. It's because of all of your willingness to make it in America. So God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you very much.